What's going on, everybody? This is the Dog and Yard, bringing you episode one of Let's Play Voting. First of all, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this and vote. I'd like to think that this channel belongs to you, as well as me, and I'm happy you're here. First of all, this will work fairly simply. One by one, I will list the games you can choose from and tell you a little bit about them, as well as providing you with a picture of the game's cover and a gameplay picture. You can vote either by leaving a comment on the video or by sending me a private message, in which case I will keep your name confidential. As of the time of this recording, there are still several episodes of Let's Fail at Half-Life 2 to upload, so you'll have a few weeks to choose. All of the choices include commentary, either post-production like that of recent Half-Life 2 videos, or live. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Choice number one. Let's play Half-Life Opposing Force. This sequel to the original Half-Life returns to Black Mesa Research Facility for a second look at the events set in motion by Gordon Freeman. Only this time, there's a difference. Rather than playing Gordon Freeman, you play Corporal Adrian Shepard, a member of the U.S. military's Hazardous Environment Combat Unit. Your primary objective, secure Black Mesa against the alien threat, eliminate any witnesses, and destroy all evidence. Your secondary objective, find Freeman, subdue Freeman, interrogate Freeman, and, if deemed necessary, eliminate Freeman. Half-Life Opposing Force features many new maps, weapons, allies, enemies, and a compelling story to rival that of Half-Life. Notably, the human soldiers Gorman Freeman kept killing are now your allies, and Adrian Shepard can control a squad of them to help him through the dangerous facility. Aside from ordinary grunts, Shepard can control engineers who can cut through otherwise inaccessible doors, and medics who can heal you and the rest of your squad. The new weapons are great too. My favorite is the light machine gun, whose massive magazine capacity and fire rate can shred anything Shepard can point it at. You can see it in the screenshot. Half-Life Opposing Force will have a post-production commentary. Choice number two. Let's play Half-Life Blue Shift. Blue Shift features a third character from the Half-Life universe, Security Officer Barney Calhoun. As a security officer for Black Mesa, Barney's job is to keep scientists and equipment safe, though his own safety is a low priority. The Resonance Cascade, started by Gordon Freeman, complicates Barney's life to no end, where before he had to put out lab fires and verify security badges, he must now defend himself against monsters, zombies, and even the military. It's going to be a long day. Half-Life Blue Shift is shorter than both Half-Life and Half-Life Opposing Force, and it doesn't include any new weapons or enemies. It's still a lot of fun, though, and features some interesting puzzles and a new mechanic called armor that replaces the battery-powered suit worn by Gordon Freeman. After all, you wouldn't give a million-dollar hazard suit to just anyone, would you? Half-Life Blue Shift will have a post-production commentary. Choice number three. Let's play Half-Life 2, Episode 1. This next chapter in the Half-Life 2 series picks up where Half-Life 2 left off. I don't want to spoil the ending of Half-Life 2, so I won't say any more. In Episode 1, you and Alex Vance must fight and sneak your way through City 17 before... Well, I'll stop there. Episode 1 features new environments and a new enemy. It is shorter than Half-Life 2, but is still very fun. One scene in particular, in which Gordon and Alex must hold out against a horde of zombies in the dark while waiting for an elevator, is exciting and fun. Half-Life 2 Episode 1 will have a post-production commentary. Choice number 4. Let's play Portal. This short, engaging puzzle game puts you in control of Chell, a young woman trapped in Aperture Science, a research facility in an undisclosed location. Having no weapons, Chell's only tool is the Aperture Science handheld portal device, a gun that shoots portals through which Chell can pass to solve puzzles. Taunted constantly by the malevolent computer GLaDOS, Chell must find a way out of the facility. The portal may not be very long, it should be experienced by everyone at least once. Valve has done a fantastic job at setting mood, and the puzzles get progressively harder and more dangerous, featuring pits of acid, spikes, turrets, and GLaDOS herself. Portal will have a live commentary. Note that due to the nature of the game, episodes may be strange lengths. Some may be quite short, while the last few may well be over the 10 minute mark. Choice number 5. Let's play Left 4 Dead. Another Valve game, Left 4 Dead is a co-op zombie survival shooter, where teamwork is even more important than steady aim. Regular zombies may not be tough, but 
they are persistent and numerous. Special zombies, such as the Hunter, Witch, and Tank, will easily bring down disorganized teams, so players must stick together and help each other out. Left for Dead features several campaigns, with a few chapters per campaign. I will play Francis, because he's a total asshole who hates everything. Left for Dead will have a live commentary. If I can get my friends to play with me, we will all communicate over voice chat, which I'm sure will provi provide many idiotic moments. If worse comes to worse, I will play with bots, but they aren't as fun to insult as real people. Choice number six. Let's play Borderlands. I know this channel is supposed to be mostly about Valve, but Borderlands is so awesome I had to include it. The only RPG I've ever properly enjoyed, Borderlands features a mediocre at best story set on the distant planet of Pandora. This poor story is made up for by excellent gameplay, gratuitous violence, and I mean gratuitous and bazillions of guns. Borderlands features four unique characters and many different enemies, from dog-like skags to huge muscle-bound bruisers. The four characters in Borderlands are as follows. Mordecai, the hunter, who sends his pet Bloodwing out to harass enemies while he kills them from long distance. Lilith, the siren, whose phase-walk ability allows her to step into another dimension and blast enemies apart. Roland, the soldier, whose Scorpio turret provides both a distraction and a second gun on the field, and Brick, the Berserker, who prefers punching bandits to death over shooting them. Borderlands will have a live commentary. And finally, choice number seven. Let's play Black Mesa. It may not be an official game, but Black Mesa, formerly known as Black Mesa Source, should certainly be included in any choice of Valve games. Made over an eight-year period by a group of developers working completely for free, Black Mesa is a modern-day reincarnation of the original Half-Life. Stunning visuals, actual physics, impressive enemy AI, and the ability to command more than two security guards at once are just some of the features introduced by Black Mesa. Yes, Black Mesa is just Half-Life with good graphics, but the experience is well worth the repetition. The face poser system means that friendly and enemy humans have randomized facial features, making every man and woman in the game unique. Unfortunately, Black Mesa does not include the chapters from the world of Zen yet, as the dev team decided to release most of the game early to appease fans. Hopefully they'll have been finished and released the Zen levels by the time we get there. Black Mesa will have a post-production commentary. So, your choices are Half-Life Opposing Force, Half-Life Blue Shift, Half-Life 2 Episode 1, Portal, Left 4 Dead, Borderlands, and Black Mesa. I hope you vote for your favorite. Thanks for watching this, and I'll see you all soon.